Hello everyone, my name is Carlos Moran. Uh, I am representing Epsol Energy and Power System Solutions. We are a company based in Mexico, Puebla, in the central part of Mexico. Today we will be explaining a ground design system with ETAP in a steel plant here in Mexico. A well designed ground system is critical to ensuring operator safety and industrial facilities. It requires by various standards and its calculation can represent difficulty when the mesh is very large or has an irregular shape. In this presentation, we are going to show you the procedure used to perform the calculation of the ground grid system using the ETAP software and the finite element method. The proposed design was analyzed and it was defined whether the mesh parameters meet the security condition necessary for its, for its implementation. Also, it's important to mention that this steel plant is very old. It dates back to maybe from 1960s, and we have the challenge to design a custom grid system for this for this steel plant. The location was in Tlaxcala, Mexico, which is in the central part of Mexico. The activity, the main activity, is the steel production and processing. And the custom method is electric and arc furnace. Ground great status, it didn't exist at all uh, because they only have some steel wire, wires working as ground cables. So, as you can see, there was non-existent any condition previously when we arrived to the, to the site. So, uh, in the first stage, we made the data collection. Uh, we need to identify the area that we needed to make the building for this new uh, system. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, this place was very uh, under very heavy circumstances of work and we needed to make all the ground resistivity measurements. As you can see in this, in the right side, we made all these real data in order to help us to simulate the real characteristic of the area. These measurements were made using the, the weather method. Uh, it took us around two weeks because all this uh, soil had uh, some layers open uh, made of uh, some dust, iron dust, and all the dust that have covered the steel plant over the years. Well, these are the values obtained after the measurement, and it was uh, after the ground resistivity measurements. We have 19 different points, and we have the single phase short circuit level, which was obtained from previous short circuit study. And it was after the calculations that we were able to obtain these measurements and very specific values about the ground resistivity measurements in the plant. Uh, it was also, as mentioned before, uh, difficult to obtain this data because we have several difficulties during the physical study and the physical um, implementation of the actual roads. The roads are about uh, two meters long and all, some of them are one meter long. So you can imagine the problem to make them, uh, to make it inside the, the soil. Well, this was the first design. Also, it was uh, uh, given the physical conditions of the plant. Um, this design contains certain numbers of rods and cables which need to be modeled in ETAP. And the software that we need to prove that the characteristics of the systems are going to be accurate for the necessities for, for the actual plant. The ground grid was proposed um, to be made up around the furnace building and around the scrap site. In this picture, you can see the buildings. Uh, you can see it, it says Orno, which is furnace, and uh, LF1 and EPT, which are, are the actual furnaces of the plant. Um, so you can see that the main electric substation is also represented here in. Uh, this part is where it's uh, represented, which is the main substation of the plant. The, this blueprint also shows the type of connection that we needed to apply to young wires and rods. In this case, we need to use exothermic welding to ensure that the uh, joints, that all the units are well installed. So uh, now talking about the exothermic welding, we choose between plenty of shapes to join cables, wires and metal structures. To make an exothermic welding, we need to use a graphite uh, mold, 
with the shape required. So we need to design very careful every joint of these ones. So we have to build and to um, to purchase the correct mold, the graphic mold. Uh, therefore, uh, every method was very important because even the ground grid uh, is well calculated. If the joints are not correct or well made, we can ensure the reliability of the system. So this was the only option that we had because we already have some physical limitations already by the, by the plant. Well, the modeling of the finite element method, uh, after collected all the previous data, we needed to simulate the systems in the software. We created a new project and started adjusting the parameters in the soil editor. In this window, we wrote the values obtained with the ground resistivity measurements, which gave us the general resistivity on the ground top and low layer. These values are important because are directly involved in the results of the study. The material of the surface is also important because it reduces the resistance of the grid and reduces the voltage levels at which the workers are going to be exposed. Every material has its own resistivity and it can be found in tables on the, te on the technical data sheets provided by ETAP. In these slides, uh, after we finished with the ground resistivity data, we started drawing the proposed ground grid system with the distance between rods and all the ground cable characteristics. ETAP helped us a lot thanks to its wide range of wire size. There are also different types of rods to choose. The wire use was two zeros AWG and five eight uh, inches rods. You can also add the cost of each road or wire meter in order to obtain an estimated price of the cooper which in fact uh, nowadays as you know maybe uh, it's a globally thing the price has maybe maybe twice the, the, the price itself so this project has been uh, under financial struggles since the beginning the software also includes an option to import uh, a grid previously drawn in AutoCAD and it's very helpful when we have a huge grid system like this one, but we can also draw the entire system in the software. ETAP also shows an, also a 3D view of the ground grid, which is very useful to imagine how the grid is going to be, is going to be built in the real life, which actually helped us a lot while we were building the system. This view can be rotated 360 degrees, uh, as you can see here in the, in the yellow one. And this can be this view can also be exported to a PDF document. Well, the next step was adjusting the parameters given in the study case window. Here we need to adjust the name of the case. We want to show the results automatically, the weight used for the calculation, the temperature, the duration of the fault current here. That, uh, in seconds, which is determined, which is determined the decrement factor. The duration of the short current to determine the permissible levels of the human body and the single phase short circuit data. We use the 50 kilo, kilogram weight, the finite element method, and the duration of the full current during 0.1 seconds and grow the single phase short circuit level of 49.29 kilobar. For a previous study with an XR relationship to run the simulation. The study was run and we selected the type of the graphs to plot. Those graphs are plotted shown in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, but it can be also saved by pictures or PDFs. Well, now the results. Um, in the window with the results that, that are shown, in this way that we can see the tolerable and calculated touch and step voltages as well as the resistance to ground in ohms. We can also see the ground voltage rise in volts. Uh, this value refers to when the currents of large magnitude enter the earth from a grounding system and not only with the will the grounding system rise in electro electrical potential, but so will the surrounding soil as well. The ground potential rise is the maximum electrical potential that the grounding grid may attain relative uh, to a distant grounding point assuming to be a potential or a remote earth, earthing system. When we run the study, the window shown did not show 
us any red warnings or red runs, meaning that the design purpose was correct and ready to be applied. In this slide, we can see a plot uh, of the absolute potential in the grid with red color, where the voltage are higher, and a blue color where the voltage are lower. Where well, you can see the red in the top and in the bottom are the lower. Uh, in these pictures, we can see the touch potential graph where the maximum voltage level is 3871.4 volts. This potential exists when a person is standing in contact with the ground structure in the substation. We can also see the step uh, potential uh, plot where it shows that the maximum voltage level is uh, 848.5 volts and this voltage could be experienced by a person walking a distance of one meter with a feet without contacting of any grounded object. Also, ETAP gave us uh, the option to print a report with the study results. We can choose to see uh, in the viewer, in PDF or in Word, which let us add some logo tips with some logos and some other related information. In the cover page of the report, we have the general information about the ground grid system, such as the total number of rods and the amount of wire involved in the study. The report is also has a summary report where we can find the ground resistance in the in ohms, the ground potential in volts, and the maximum total step potential of the ground grid system. Now, well, the building the implementation. Uh, Previously, about building this uh, system, we make uh, some several meetings with the engineering staff of the steel plant and also our uh, technical uh, team, uh, led by the engineer Aislin Diaz Martinez, which is uh, the leader, the technical uh, design of this project. We started building according with the specifications and also with the the length that we calculated previously. So you can see that we started from the main substation that uh, which is in the back, and we started uh, making with the heavy machinery all the length of the wire and also the exothermic welding that you can see here with the graft mold. Also, you can see that, well, back then it was a rainy season here in Mexico. So we have some struggles building the um, the physical part so we have to be very creative in order to avoid these uh, falling the walls within the um, within the ground and in some parts here specifically we have some struggles because of the layers of dust made of iron that were here and uh, uh, around the edges around the the gears that the, the steel plants were was already running you can see one of the <clears throat> here uh, where we put some of the main rods where we later we will be calculating and measuring the resistance of the ground. Here also you can see that we we needed also more heavy machinery in order to make all these lines where the rod will be um, installed and also the wire. We also put uh, some uh, ground intensity, uh, let's say some helpers, so we can achieve the desired ground resistance uh, in order to prevent any further, um, let's say, problems in the future. So we have, uh, we, we, we're still working in this project nowadays, since uh, there is very, it's a very length lengthy distance is about 1500 uh, meters length of this project and then we can uh, we're still uh, building because the plant is uh, running 24/7 uh, so we built this system when the steel plant is uh, maintenance so this building has been taking some time after several months and we expect to finish it this year. So uh, thank you for your attention for this presentation. Here are the data for my colleagues, um, Carlos Manuel Ramirez, which is uh, the owner and director, as Lindias Martinez, which is the technical uh, leader in this project, 
where if you have any technical uh, question, we can solve it uh, in these questions um, section, Q&A questions, and myself. So um, please let us know any question you have regarding this project or any other question here. And thank you for your attention.